Okay, this video will introduce some of the important motion concepts in, in our first chapter. Uh, and I want to motivate some of this discussion by talking about a ball that's thrown vertically up. Um, so um, what I will do, just an overview, is I will make what's known as a motion diagram for a ball, which um, shows the position of the ball in one second interv intervals. Um, and then I want to um, plot a velocity versus time, both average velocity and instantaneous velocity versus time. Um, and then I want to use that to um, show how we can get acceleration. And then I also want to use the velocity versus time curve to show with some calculus how we can uh, get uh, vertical position. So um, starting with a motion diagram, um, I am showing the position of, of a ball that's being thrown vertically up um, in one second intervals. And so it starts, um, let's say, at this dot um, at time zero. One second later, it, it displaces three meters in the positive direction. Um, I'm assuming up is positive. And then in the following second, it displaces one, uh, two meters um, up and then one meter up um, and then from second three to four it doesn't go anywhere and from four to five and five to six and six to seven and th it then follows its route backwards all the displacement vectors pointing down where on the way up they pointed up um, so um, these d um, displacement vectors in, in the one second uh, time intervals now um, mean actually two things they mean first of all that the object is displacing three meters per second in the first second, but that that because it's uh, it has a three meter displacement upwards in one second means its average velocity is three meters per second. Three meters per second average velocity from zero to one. Two meters per second average velocity from one to two. Uh, one meter per second average velocity from two to three. Zero meters per second average velocity from three to four minus one average velocity from four to five minus two meters per second from five to six and minus three meters per second from six to seven and so if we look at the average velocities um, in these one second intervals you can see that to get the next average velocity we always add, add minus one meter per second on to the previous average velocity minus three meters per second plus negative one meters per second is two meters per second. Two meters per second plus minus one meters per second is one meter per second. One meter per second plus minus one meter per second is zero meters per second, etc. So let's take that information over to this V versus T plot, which very simply is the vertical axis is velocity. Um, we're going to see I'm going to plot both average and instantaneous velocity versus time in seconds. Um, and the first thing I do is I plot these dark points here are the average velocity points corresponding to my motion diagram. So for example, this point right here, three meters per second average velocity. Um, and I'm putting it midway between a zero and one. That represents the motion of the ball from here to here. And uh, then midway between one and two seconds is two meters per second average velocity and and so on and so I get um, all of these average velocity points they all on a, lie on a straight line and when I connect that straight line I get the instantaneous velocity versus time which goes through the average velocity it's a straight line because my acceleration is constant and uh, what is the significance of this uh, instantaneous velocity? It is, um, um, except for sine, it's the reading one would get if a speedometer were put inside um, the, the ball. And so you can see that the um, instantaneous velocity is decreasing at the same rate as the average velocity. Always true for um, constant acceleration. Um, so 
The next plot I make is the acceleration versus time plot. Acceleration is basically just this delta V average uh, minus one meter per second divided by one meter by one second giving me minus one meter per second per second. It's constant and negative one. Okay, now for uh, a little bit of calculus. If I look at this strip right here of width delta t and of height v, it's going to go up and hit this v versus t curve at, at some value v. We can take the midpoint as being v if you like. Um, now we know that v by definition is equal to delta x divided by delta t. And as I squeeze the delta t, narrower and narrower, that would um, be equivalent to making this skinnier and skinnier, um, I get closer and closer to the instantaneous velocity. That indeed is the definition of instantaneous velocity. It's the average velocity as the delta t goes to zero. Now let's turn this equation around um, and rewrite it as delta x is equal to v times delta t. Well, delta x on the one hand is the displacement the particle undergoes, the ball undergoes, um, on the other hand, uh, V delta T is the area of um, this rectangle. So if one starts at um, the rightmost end of this V versus T curve, leftmost end, excuse me, of this V versus T curve, and starts adding all the displacements up, I'm going to be able to add all the displacements up and get the total displacement of the, of the ball, um, say from um, time zero to um, when it gets to the apex, when its velocity is zero, time three and a half. Um, so adding all these strips up is tantamount to finding the area under the V versus T curve. And therefore, um, the conclusion is that um, from the instantaneous velocity, the curve of the instantaneous velocity versus time, the area under that V versus T curve um, between any two time points gives me the displacement of the ball. Um, but if I know where the ball started, I can put the, the total displacement of the ball um, together with its initial position to tell what the final position of the ball is. And so therefore, when I um, look at this y versus t curve down here where what I've done is I've plotted that the ball is um, three meters above the floor at one second and two meters higher than that five meters at two seconds one meter higher than that six meters at three seconds basically in other words taking this motion diagram data and putting it into a y versus t plot I get um, a parabolic um, looking um, set of points here um, and now I'm going to ask, well, how high does this ball actually go? Does it only go six meters high? Um, your intuition should tell you that it's going to go a little higher than that. These are only um, the positions at uh, discrete time points. So how can I figure out how high the ball will go above its initial position? Um, I can do that by finding the area in this upper triangle here. That's going to be the displacement. It's a positive displacement because the area is above the x-axis um, that this ball will have in getting and going from its initial position to its apex position, which corresponds to the vehicle zero position. So therefore, the question of how high the ball goes is the um, the extra, the displacement from its starting point is the area under this triangle, which is one half the base times the height, which in other words is one half, 3.5 meters per second. That would be the height of the triangle times the base, 3.5 seconds. That's this base um, length right here. If you do the math, that turns out to be six and one eighth meters. So the ball does indeed go a little bit higher than six meters as your intuition should suggest. Can we find a formula for instantaneous velocity as a function of time? Well, yes, very simply. Um, by looking at this um, line here and realizing um, the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. Uh, the y-intercept is three and a half meters per second according to this. 
Um, and uh, the slope of this line is the acceleration, which is minus 1 meter per second per second times time. And so therefore, the equation is, for this particular scenario, 3.5 meters per second minus 1 times t. Can you find a formula for y of t? In other words, can you find a formula that will fill this whole curve in, give the proper 6 and 1 quarter, 6 and 1 eighth, um, height of the ball, which will occur halfway between 3 and 4 seconds. And can you also um, deduce from what I've shown here how high a ball thrown at 6 meters per second would go, assuming the same acceleration?